We believe at Exhale Church uh, that you should see the Word of God for yourself. You can see the Word of God and see it manifested in your everyday life when you leave the sanctuary. We don't believe in standing up here and making up as we go. No, you need to see the Word. You need to believe the Word. You need to read the Word. And don't put your soul into the hands of one preacher, two preachers, five preachers. We believe you should see the Word of God for yourself. We're always in Exhale Church pointing people to God. We are spiritual traffic cops pointing people to God. And we stay out of the way of God's Word. We stay out of the way of God's exploits, and we allow God to do a work in you. Amen? So make sure you have your iPads, your phones, your Bibles, so you can see the Word of God now. We're going to be uh, uh, still dealing with, dealing with our life track, which is changing lives, not just in Excel Church, but all over, all over the country. Uh, people are being changed by this, and people are being awakened to the idea that, hey, I do have a life track. I do have an origin that affects me to today. And a lot of people are saying, you know what? I haven't been in church all my life, but I tell you what, God is not in me. They're actually admitting that. Why? Because in church, we can become so cliche. We can become so quotish. How many people know when, when, when your knees buckle, when life makes your knees buckle, yeah. you're going to need more than cliches. Yeah. You're going to need more than quoting scripture. You're going to need to know your God. And you don't know anyone you don't spend time with. So if this is the only time you spend with him, you give him one hour a week, and you say, oh, I know God inside out. No, you don't. You know of God. So I want to encourage you now. We're heading into a season where it's going to require you to have a relationship with God. And if you don't see what's going on in this world, it is about to get turbulent. And the Holy Ghost don't want nobody putting all their eggs in one basket because it's about to get turbulent. And all we have is all we have. And that's our God leading us and guiding us and taking care of us and providing for us. But you will see many systems fail this world in 2024. And we're going to need a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, we're in part two uh, of, of, of dealing with our life track, and, and we're, on, we're on this thing called abandonment. And uh, when you talk about abandonment, I don't want you to just think, uh, uh, I, I, I didn't deal with abandonment because I wasn't left. My parents was in the house with me, both my parents. Well, you can be in both the house with your, in the house with both your parents and still feel abandoned. Why? Because you may not be the favorite child. Oh, yes, I am. You, you may not be. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you, you may not feel like you was. You, know, you, you may feel like, man, they favor her or him over me, and I, you know, I don't want to voice it out loud, but I sense that. That's abandonment. You dealt with some abandonment. You might have been betrayed in a relationship. Somebody promised you something, and they didn't come through, and you thought they would come through, and guess what? You felt betrayed. You felt abandoned. All of us has went, went through this. <clears throat> Let me plug this. When somebody gives you their heart to love, don't be out here playing games with it. Don't be out here playing games with it. When somebody gives you their heart to love, don't be out here playing games with it. And I want to encourage you as, you as you hear this message this morning about abandonment and God, are you there? Is a subtitle. God, are you there? Are you with me? Do you see what's going on? My gosh. God is like, I'm here. Where are you at? I'm here. Well, by mouth. I only see you when a crisis hit. And you confuse that with your spiritual muscles. No, when things are going great, you need to be building them up. But when a crisis hit, you come to me and say, God, where I am? God's like, I've been here all the while. It's your faith that lacks. It's your endurance that lacks. It's you that's lacking. And we don't want to admit that, but I'm here to tell you, we got to ask the question sometimes in life when trials and tribulations and abandonment hits our homes, hits our relationships, God, where are you? Were you there when this happened to me as a child? Were you there when my husband walked out on me? Were you there when my wife stepped out? Were you there when my parents stepped out left me? Were you even there? And God was there. There's just evil in this world. So if you're a man or a woman and somebody's giving you their heart, I don't know what, you're, what else you're looking for. Oh, boy. Young ladies, stop dressing to be seen by all eyes. Being seen by all eyes appeases you. 
Preserve yourself for your husband. Now, I don't like, I want my wife running around dressed like Jezebel. Now, I, I, I don't want that. I want to see the curves. I want to see some action. But, 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 but even with my wife, I mean, my, I mean, my God, I, you know, you, 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 you already, you, you got the big dog. You, you, I mean, you, you got the big dog. You, I mean, <laughs> there's nothing else to go out here and, and try to flaunt and flex. And this, there's no need to do that. Well, stop doing that. Number one, n- number two, I, I said this, but I just feel it's happening. I see it happening in my family. I see it happening in this church. You got to stop being afraid to age. You got to stop that. It's your first sign you're afraid of death. You got to stop it. You're not going to run a 4 3 40 at, at, at 55. <laughs> you're not going to do that. You just can't do it no more. You're not. You're not. You're, it's, you're just not it's not going to happen. You've had four children, five children, six children. You're not going to return to 18. It's not going to happen. So we got to stop allowing aging to bully us. How old are you? Let's just say God is good. <laughs> like we can't. When your kid is 17. I know you're this. <laughs> My God, what, what, what are we afraid of when it comes to aging? I, I don't get it. Your 18-year-old days are over. Your 30-year-old days are over. Your 40-year-old days are over for some of us. It's over. Now you got to carry yourself with glory. You got you to be comfortable in your own skin now. Now you got to really dig into God and say, okay, do I, really, do I really know who I am? Because if I don't, I'm going to open my shirt up, show my chest hairs, put on, about, put on about five gold necklaces, and I'm riding around with a Corvette and Big collar flying through the wind, all this kind of stuff. And man, the young folks just laughing at you. <laughs> I'm telling you, the devil is running rampant in this area. Instead of you waking up every single morning, say, Lord, I thank you that my youth is renewed like the eagle. I thank you, Lord, that every organ in this body, it functions to perfection from head to toe. Jesus died, and he died for me to be healed from the crowns of my head, to, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. And Lord, I just received my healing. I received long life. I just received that I'm going to be here for 120 years, healthy, whole, and moving forward with you. And I just received that. But I am not going to lament my 30s. Boy, if I only would have. Stop it. God is good. He's been good to you. Believe it or not, when you start doing that, you age faster. God told me one time, he said, man, he said, one of the worst enemies to feeling, you get out there and you're feeling good and you're doing stuff and this, that, and the other. And he say, you start believing the hype. <laughs> you at the family reunion, you run around with the young boys playing flag football, you start, you start believing the hype. Uh, you're still 47. <laughs> I don't care how good you feel. I don't care what you don't feel now. You're still 47. And you can't afford to sprain your ankle out here. Now, I'm coming with the service title, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you now. <laughs> That's why I want to encourage anybody. You got a little nicks and dings in, in, in your 30s and in your 40s, and you playing around with it? Let me tell you something. That little ache you got going on in, in, in that elbow, in that shoulder, in that leg, in that ankle, it, wherever it is, look, you need to go ahead and get on that thing. Because healing at 55... It's not the same as healing at 40. Hop on that thing. Get the proper nutrition. Get that thing dealt with because you don't want to get late in your years having to deal with that thing. Amen? Amen. Okay, we're done with the public service announcement there. <laughs> now, 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 let's, okay. All right, let's, okay, we, we're going to get to the message. Go on to church. Some people have fooled themselves in their thinking. They're somehow or another disciplined enough to develop their relationship with God. And it's possible. Very few I've seen do it. Running solo. But if they just get honest with themselves, outside of church, the most time they probably ever spent with God 
not outside of church, was in church. And the devil has something going on now that's very dangerous. He's convinced people to confine themselves to their own wisdom. And that's dangerous. There's no more accountability, no more fellowship, no more people checking on you. Let me tell you something. We're all going through this life gathering guests to be at our home going. And we gather those guests through fellowship. We gather those guests through helping people, supporting people, being in the community. When you break off by yourself, you may have a guest of one. I don't care. I'm gone anyway. Uh, but your kids are around. You need to be honored. Well, that's all we're doing. So if you say, I don't, I don't hang out with people. I, I don't want to do it with people. I, I, I don't let people in my business. I, I just... You, 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 you're not gathering guests to be at your home going. You're not. Secondly, if you can count on your fingers, two best friends, two covenant friends, that's inner court. They know everything about you, your health, your marriage, everything. If you can do that, you're cooking. Yes, sir. Yeah. Stop this idea that you're going to have 10 of those. If you can do two, you're cooking. So I want to encourage you, stay in fellowship with the Lord. Kids, grandkids, teenagers, daughters, sons, look, man, I can't sit in church. Just, just, it's, it's like sun tanning. Just come and get a spiritual tan. And if you keep coming and getting that spiritual tan, you're going to wake up one day and you're going to realize, man, I think different. Yeah, the word of God has tanned your soul. And now your mind is renewed. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Excel Church, we don't condemn nobody. We don't look down on nobody. We, you, you, look, come as you are, and the word will deal with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So encourage your, your, your family and your friends. You know, if it's not XL, get somewhere else. But get in fellowship with believers, man. Amen? Amen. All right. God, are you there? God, were you there? Genesis 37. We're going to look at the story of Joseph. Now, if you've ever been betrayed, and I have, I have been betrayed. I've had people at my house that betrayed me. I had people look me in my eyes and say they love me and be, they betrayed me. I had people that I've helped build their lives, and they betrayed me. Listen to me. Every relationship that you're in has the possibility of betrayal. No, not mine. There you go, being foolish again. It has the possibility of betrayal. And anybody that you have in close proximity to you that's not allowing you in, I'm here to tell you something. They're a candidate for betrayal. Because they have, you're, in a, you're in a guarded relationship. I'm not saying you got to tell your business to everybody, but you know what I'm talking about. There's some women, there's some men, men and women you can go to dinner with, laugh, talk, giggle, gaggle, talk about the kids. That's it. You ain't going to hear nothing about my marriage. <laughs> you ain't going to hear nothing about the turbulent thing going on in, in, in my marriage, nothing about what's going on in my body, and that's okay. But the one that you tell that to, you need to really hone in on that relationship. Why? It's important for people to know that you're there. And if you have two people that's in your inner court, man, you're cooking. Don't come to church thinking you're going to have 35 friends. <laughs> Don't come to church thinking you're going to find your best friend. Why? Because a lot of people that's in church, their best friend is from high school. So you're not on the, on, on the anniversary thing, and you're not at the, the, the sick birthday party because you usher together in the hall, and you feel like you should have been there. It's like, uh, well, how do you feel that? I know you're in church. I love you in church. I pray for you, this, that, and the other. But, 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 but my homegirl that I was college roommates with, man, she's been with me through thick and thin. How did you think you was going to trump her? It's not going to happen. And we get offended because we think that best friends are found in church. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm just saying we've got to stop being offended when we're not that person. Just make sure you got two of them. Last thing. There's 
a young man uh, at the house. He was at my house. We talked about an hour. Uh, we were standing in the street talking and uh, thriving business here in Jacksonville. We are standing there talking. And, you know, and, 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 and I, he's the only guy that's ever spent the night at my house. Uh, ever. <laughs> uh, that I didn't know. I mean, hey, he came down. I didn't know him. And I said, hey, you want to stay here? And he, and he stayed there. Only guy I ever done that. And, um, and right before he left, I, 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 I looked him in the eye because he has such a generous heart. And I looked him in the eyes and I said, I need you to know something. I need you to know something. Because he had done something for me. And, and I said, I need you to know something. I said, you need to know I'm interested in you and your well-being. I don't thrive to be interesting to you. And I meant every bit of it. Because when people thrive to be interesting to you, all they do is talk about them. I take an interest in your prosperity. I take an interest in your soul. I take an interest in what God is doing in your life. I take an interest in your family. I'm not in this relationship to show how powerful and, 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 and who, who I am. I'm not in that for this. I take a, and if anybody knows me, this is how I approach relationships. If you're in a relationship and it's one way, <laughs> I'm here to tell you, you're setting yourself up for betrayal. Because you're doing everything one way and wondering, man, why are they coming back to me here? Now, you got to know how I come back to you now. It comes back to you in various ways. It can come back to you in text messages. It can come back to you in a thank you. It can come back to you in a I love you. But, but the idea that you're just in a relationship and you just want to be interesting to everybody and you're not taking an interest in their well-being, you're, 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 you're doing it all wrong. Because see, people I'm interested in, I give pearls to. People that I try to give pearls to and they don't want them, guess what? I put them back in my pocket. I put them back in my pocket. Why? Because I'm in a season of my life where, where I'm going to give my best to the best. The ROI, you better know, give your best to the best. When I got a business, I got five people in it, da 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 You're not discriminating, but you better give your best to the best. Well, I got a department or team I'm running, da, da, da. You're not discriminating, but you notice, okay, this lady right here, you better give your best to the best. Why? They're going to give you the return, the highest return. Still love on everybody else, but we ain't got time to waste in this season right now. We're trying to move things forward in our lives, in God's, in God's kingdom. Give your best to the best. And that's not looking down on nobody. It is the people investment law. Do you hear what I'm saying? I don't know about that. Well, hey, <laughs> Jesus gave his best to the best. And it, and it narrowed it down to three of them. He understood it. Kobe Bryant went home to be with the Lord. And guess what? Kyrie Irving, you look at him right now. Jason Tatum, you look at him right now. You look at Devin Booker right now. All of those guys were Mamba Academy mentored guys. And he took an interest in them and he gave his best to the best. And look at them today, all stars. <clears throat> Genesis 37. Okay. Pastor, you can just keep on talking. You, 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 no, we got to get to the message here. Joseph, jo Joseph was betrayed, man. He was betrayed by his family. He was betrayed by his brothers. And as I've been studying Joseph and his story, his lifeline and his bloodline, I noticed something. And if you don't know this about Joseph, he was in a blended family. Right? He was in a blended family. And, and, and Jacob, who was, his, who was the, the, they named Jacob the, the great deceiver. Later on, God says, your name now is Israel. Jacob <clears throat> was a deceiver. All kind of stuff was going on in that bloodline. And it was a blended family. And if you know anything about a blended family, children are always watching who's favored. You can't get away from it. 
They're always watching who do you favor. They're always watching you go the extra mile for him. You go the extra mile for her. For, for, for her. You do not go the extra mile for me. Every blended family. They're watching. Why? Because they have a third eye. This is my dad, but my mom don't stay with us. You're my stepmom, but you have your kids here with you. Hmm. So my dad and my stepmom have kids in the house. I'm here, but my mom is not over here, not here with me. Let me tell you something. That kid right there is watching every discipline move that stepmom makes compared to her kids and him or her. It just happens. Jacob, Joseph, obviously didn't understand the rules of blended families. So we're going to see in the word of God where betrayal can come in and abandonment can happen to you in a blended family. But, 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 but some, of the, some of the aspects we're going to pull out of this story can apply to us today. So I'm going to give you some aspects on Joseph's life and how it pertains to God, are you there? God, were you there? I feel abandoned. Genesis 37, verse 14. Now, very familiar story. You guys are very familiar with this. <clears throat> oh, boy. Yeah, verse two. we'll start there. And he said to him, him who, Jacob, and he said to him, go pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and, and, and well with the flocks, and bring me, the, bring me word again. So he went him out of, out of the vale of Hebron. Thank you, Lord. Boy, the Holy Spirit is something else today. And he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, uh, what are you seeking for? So, so Jacob's dad has told him to go find your brothers. What are, you, what are you seeking for? And he said, I seek my brothers. Tell me. I'm looking for my brothers. Now, <laughs> Jacob, I mean Joseph, the Bible says Joseph was Jacob's favorite. One side, Jacob had Leah. On the other side of that family, he had Joseph and Benjamin by Rachel. And it says it was his favorite. He loved Joseph. Now, if you know anything about the story, <laughs> he, <laughs> boy, he, he, he showed up and he looked at them two sisters. And the Bible says, the Bible says about Leah. So her eyes was lazy. It says her eyes were lazy. Uh, Genesis 29. Genesis 29, it says her eyes was lazy. I think it's verse 14. It says her eyes were lazy. And he, he's kind of looking like, uh, oh, man. It's, <laughs> okay, but uh, can I just say something? That's the one I want right there. And, and the story goes on. So, 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 so now Joseph and Benjamin comes out of, out of uh, Rachel. <clears throat> it's amazing how honest they were back then. And we get in church and we get deep. And say, so, hey, she's got a great spirit. <laughs> He's got a great spirit in him. So that's going to trump my natural eyes, my attraction. <laughs> got to be attracted to him. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear stuff like that. <laughs> so, so he, he's out there. He, 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 he's looking for a brother. And, 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 and verse 16, and he asked, I seek my brother and tell me, I pray thee, where they feed, where do they feed their flocks? Verse 17. And the man said, they are departed thence, for I have heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brothers. So he's oblivious. He's oblivious to the hatred, the jealousy, and the envy that's brewing in his own house via his stepbrothers on Leah's side. 
in this blended family. They don't like him. They don't like the idea that he's the favorite. They can't stand him. And a lot of times, your enemies are the quietest people in your circle. They watch you. They envy you. They don't rejoice with you. They have a good moment. Boy, you're sharing it. You have a good moment. You don't even see them nowhere because deep down inside of them, they're not for you. And they don't have guts enough to tell you, so they'll let the relationship continue on. And guess what? The betrayal and the, and, and, and the offense, it mutates like a cold to pneumonia. Boy, if you'd have dealt with it right then, it wouldn't mutate. It wouldn't have mutated. But now, you've let this betrayal and this offense in your heart just go along, smiling like a chess cat in these people's faces, and you are silently offended. I used to be slow to ask people, what's wrong with you? You want to go? You want to stop? Stop. Why? Because, see, I know offense mutates. When it sits, it turns into, okay, I'm offended now. I hadn't dealt with it, but I'm quiet. It turns into betrayal. Why? Because when you're offended and you're quiet and you're around people, you are not an associate. You are a spy. And you are spying to gain ammunition to trip them up in the future. You've seen it several times on social media where somebody says, oh, I love them so much. I just, oh, I adore them. And boy, five years later, they are spewing poison. Well, my question is, were you lying then or are you lying now? Which one is it? No, offense mutated in your heart. So if you got a sniffle for two weeks, <laughs> like my grandmother used to say, and you heezing. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. All my cousins and stuff. And, and my grandma used to have this stuff in the can. You remember that Campo Panique? Yeah. With, with the white bottom and the green top? Yeah. You know, we got Vicks every day. You put it on your nose, on your feet, or around your, your glances. And your, she had this thing called Campo Panique. And she'd take that little salve, she'd rub it, and she'd hit us, get up on our nose, get, get up on the temples, hit, hit that chest, you, 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 you put it up on your feet, put the socks on it. You're going to sweat it out tonight. You're going to sweat it out tonight. Let me tell you something. If that thing lingers for two weeks, colds turn into pneumonia. It mutates. And when a fence lingers, I don't care if it's your children. I don't care if it's your spouse. It mutates into something. And nobody can avoid it mutating when they don't deal with it. I used to get mad at my wife so I used to get fire and mad at her when she, she just addressed stuff on the spot. Ain't no going to sleep with it. Ain't no riding it off. Ain't no listening to that, that, uh, uh, Maverick City music. To, 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 ain't, ain't none of that. It is right there on the spot. She's going to address it. And it doesn't mutate. I used to, I didn't hate it, but I just, it just, my God, you just spoiling the moment. I'm just, no, no, what you said and how you did and what you did and what you're doing, I, I, I don't like it. And before I allow this thing to mutate in my heart under the guise of, uh, I want to keep the peace. No, you're addicted to peace. In every relationship, that comes with time when it's got to be some confrontation here now. Healthy confrontation. Like Paul and Barnabas, we got to talk about some things. And when you don't do that, your offense mutates into betrayal. And that's what's going on with his brothers. They've watched that dad favor him. They've watched that dad bring home that two-piece uh, KFC uh, uh, a chicken dinner. They've watched that dad take him to Universal and didn't take them. They've watched that dad go easy on his planet. They have watched him, and instead of going to the dad and say, why do you? They take it out on the brother, the stepbrother. It's quiet in the house of God. Verse 18, and, he, and when they, so, so he comes upon his brothers, and when they saw him from afar off, even before he came near unto them, watch this, they conspired. The offense has mutated. They conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, which tells us they've been talking about it back in their rooms. They've been talking about it amongst themselves, how dad favors this one. 
back in their rooms. And if you don't think this happens in your family, I'm, I'm here to tell you, it, 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 it happens. I'm not hearing about it. Well, you don't make an environment conducive for them to talk about it. But it's happening. And they conspired against him to slay him. Now, why were they so mad at him? Because remember, he, 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 he had a dream, and he released a dream, and you're going to bow down to me, brothers, you, pops, all, mom, all of you, you're going to bow down to me, what Joseph told him. That's what I seen in the dream. And when they looked at him, my stepbrothers like, bow down to you. And they couldn't believe it because they hated him so much. Bow down? How can you even say that? But the Bible says that Jacob took note of that and said, hmm. So he does this. <clears throat> okay, catch this. You got to stop releasing intimate things to people that you love. But those people have not demonstrated that they love you. Let me say that again. You are releasing intimate details to people that you love, but they have not demonstrated that they love you. And when you do that, you set yourself up for betrayal. That's why I look for, okay, I just laid my marriage out there. Lay yours out there. I just laid out there what I deal with in my marriage, what I'm working on. Lay yours out there. Oh, you, you, you don't ever lay it out there? Ah, oh, boy. I'm, see, see, I love you, so I'm releasing stuff to you. But once you figure out, wait a minute, that is not a good relationship law. That's, that's going to set me up to be hurt. And we get it confused. Why? Because you're one way in a relationship releasing all your intimate details. They haven't demonstrated that they love you. Let me get back on the text. And they said one to another, verse 19, Behold, this, dream, this dreamer, see it? You see it? They're going back. When he said that, that thing that he said was mutating in them. They didn't call him Joseph. This dreamer, they didn't call him his stepbrother, their brother, their blood, this dreamer, what you said in that family room, we've been holding it for years. And they turned to one another and said, look, behold, here comes the dreamer. That offended them. And when offense is not dealt with, betrayal and abandonment is going to be inevitable in that relationship. Here comes this dreamer. Come now, therefore, let us slay him. Not play tricks on him. The hate had mutated we want to kill him. <clears throat> Let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say, some evil beast. Look, look, look at the conniving. You're, you're, you're creating lies to betray and abandon your brother. We will say that some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. There it is again. What you said back way when has mutated into betrayal and hate, and we want to kill you. That's why it's dangerous to be around phony people. It's dangerous to be around phony people. And if you drive me anywhere, I'll let you know. Hey, you sleepy over there? <laughs> hey, you, use your mirrors. You ride with somebody, they got to do a 180 to get over? Man, I'm over here playing. I'm on TikTok. Can I get over? Is it clear? Use your mirrors. Man, I'm the passenger. What you asking me for? I'm trying to relax over here. Use your mirrors. Man, you got to open your mouth. Hey, man, if you can, don't, don't follow a car so close. I, I, I mean, I ain't trying to drive your car now, but just, just don't do it. Hey, man, if you can, I... I you know, we're, we're headed to South Florida. You can, you can, you can turn off Albert Slaughter. Put, throw some Bob Marley in there. Let's just, let's enjoy this vacation. I don't want to touch the radio, but, you know, I want to, because I, and I've listened to Albert Slaughter for, for an hour. I, I, I'm aggravated in here. <laughs> I 
They got a friend and spiritual daughter can pop gum. I'm telling you, can pop that gum. I, I, I don't know how to do it. I, I, I wish I knew how to do it because I, I would pop back with her. But can pop that gum like nobody's business. And we was going to Tampa on vacation. And I just turned around. I said, hey, you have got to stop popping that gum. It's just like nails on a chalkboard. See, if you don't do stuff like that, when you get down there on vacation, it's, well, let's, all right, we're here, guys, let's go. Uh, I'll be in the room. Why? You kept your mouth shut. Pastor, I know you're in the front seat. You got on 68 up there. Can you turn, turn the air down? That's what you need to say, because I'm going to be on 68 comfortable, and you back there freezing, mad at me. <laughs> mad at your husband. He ain't said nothing. Husband, say something. Your wife back there freezing. Pastor, can you go ahead and just bump it up to 75? She, she real cold back there. No, no problem, man. Yeah. Shoot. I don't want her to mutate with you. That's what's happening here. I'm in a relationship, and we've never had any kind, any, anything you're talking about. You're in a relationship and never had disagreements? Never? <laughs> never? That's pretty amazing. Mr. Mike, remember, man, you went, went head to head when you was in Arizona, right? You told me, that, hey, check your emails a little quicker and get back with me a little quicker there. I said, well, hold on, buddy. <laughs> My God, we've been knowing one another for six months. Wait a second here. <laughs> and I look at us today. We endured. But it wasn't pizzas and cream. Verse 20, he said, let, look, let us slay him, cast him into a pit, and we will say some evil beast have devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it. Oh, man. Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands. In every relationship, you better have a policing element in it. If you can't police one another in a relationship, especially in church, and say, no, 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 hold on, hold on now. Wait a second. You've crossed the line with your mouth now. These people are good to us. They've been good to us. Stop right there. That's enough. What is that? That's the husband policing that wife. Because if he keep on talking, it's going to get down in his heart. And it's going to get further than hers. You've got to be able to police one another. My wife will tell me in a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, easy now. Hold on. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Why? We police one another. We don't control one another. But these boys right here, these brothers, he rose up and said, whoa, whoa, guys, this is going a bit far because of a dream here. Wait a minute. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out, out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Somebody, the, the cooler heads have to prevail before betrayal takes place and abandonment takes place. You can't be on the phone with your siblings chewing up and spitting out your other sibling. Somebody on that phone, it's got to be a policing element. So look, I know you're ticked off. I'm ticked off. But wait a minute now. This is our sister here. Now, what I can do is I can set up an ice cream date, a coffee date, whatever it is. We can talk this thing out. We grew up together, but th th this is going a bit too far. You're not going to let your kids go over to our house. You're not going to do this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's got to be some kind of a policing element in a relationship. Otherwise, you're going to let offense, betrayal, and abandonment run rampant in the relationships in your life. And mainly in church. There's two sides to every story. And I don't want to hear they always. Because I've seen you on Facebook hugged up. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear you say they never. Because I've seen you say they were good to you. I don't want to hear you say that. Just tell me you had a disagreement. And you're working through it. But don't you come to me and try to make them the main villain in this story. Because I'm going to police it. I'm say, nah, you're lying. I've seen them. They were good to you. And every disagreement doesn't require a fallout. But when you don't check it, it turns into abandonment and betrayal in that relationship. And Reuben said unto them, uh, uh, shed no blood, but cast him into the pit. So in other words, Reuben's like, man, don't kill him. Let's just throw him into the pit. In, 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 in relationships, to, to, to keep betrayal and offense out 
and abandonment. Now, again, there's got to be a policing element. But to come together and slay and slaughter someone's character, and they're not there to defend it, let me tell you something. Somebody needs to step up and say, hey, 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 mom, dad, whoa, wait a second. That's your child you're talking about. She or he's a grown man. They made a decision. We don't run their house. We don't. And he or she's been good to us. What are you guys talking about? I mean, she tells you no one time and she's a bad person? He tells you no one time and he's a bad son now? What are you talking about? Somebody's got to step up and go, let me remind you guys, this relationship is good on both sides. But when that doesn't happen, there's no policing offense and betrayal sets in. That's why if you're close to me and your wife or your husband is popping off, you need to say, whoa, 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 whoa. Here's what we can do. Let's just get out and run them. <laughs> we ain't got to serve. We ain't got to do none of that kind of stuff. But you're not going to do that. And we go in there and smile to their faces. Not going to happen. <clears throat> Why? Because betrayal is inevitable. And that same goes for your relationships. We love everybody in church. I love everybody in church. I pray for everybody. I pray for this church. I pray for members. I pray for partners. I, but I'd be lying to you if, if, if I said, okay, uh, 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 if, if I see my inner court having dinner with my enemies. I'd be lying to you if I say that didn't bother me. And I've told you what they did. And I've told you what they said. I'd be lying to you to say that that doesn't bother me. But guess what? Go ahead and have your dinner. Go ahead and do it. I still love you. I love them. But guess what? Slot it. Why is that so important? Because in church, we just want to get beat up in our relationships and set ourselves up for offense and betrayal in the name of love. Love does not have to be kneecap to kneecap. Love does not have to be belly to belly. I love you from a distance, but I hear what you say, and I know what you're saying. I'm not breaking bread with you. Did you just say that? You're doing right, I just said it. You let somebody from your church break in your house. Break in your house. Take your stuff, sell it on Facebook, <laughs> and a pastor come to you and say, look, you need to walk in love, and I'm here to tell you that, and you go, I know I need to walk in love. That church member will never come in my house again, ever. It won't happen. What? Ever. They stole from me. And you go on Facebook, and you see your children, we're out here celebrating such, 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 oh my God. And you're like, that's the guy that stole from us. Oh, my phone. Take that down, and I mean take it down now. What are you doing? Stole your grandmother's jewelry. You're up here talking about, what are you doing? Keep loving them. Show them the love of God. But for the love of God, Where's your relationship morals at? Your dad and mom is over here hurting. Let me, let me. But cast him into the pit that, that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid, uh, rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brother, they uh, 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 stripped Joseph, watch this now, of his coat of many colors, who gave it to him? Coats of many colors back then was a sign of royalty. And they gripped the wrists and it went all the way down to the ankles. And it was a sign of royalty and superiority. And his brothers didn't like it. First, they didn't like him dreaming. Second, they didn't like the fact that he, the father called everybody in the room and said, this coat of many colors, sign of superiority, blessing, royalty, I'm going to give it to Joseph. <laughs> they remembered that. Now, now again, stepbrothers, blended family. And I've said this before, it takes work in a blended family to keep balance. You got to be conscious in a blended family to have balance. I got to be kind across the board. My discipline has to be the same across the board. It can't be it, it, because kids pick up on it. They pick up on it. But you want to go out, you got to go out to dinner, but they got to stay at the house together. 
Now, you want everybody getting along. You don't want nobody sitting back like these brothers were, like, uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Let's go in the backyard now, buddy. He's standing six two, you five foot six. Let's go back there now. Run your mouth now. That bruise. So you gotta be, you gotta, you, you gotta be balanced across the board. <clears throat> so <laughs> there again, they recite something that they seen in the past that they were carrying, and that was that coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it, and they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, uh, here come some hustlers. <laughs> here come some merchantmen. And they're coming from Gilead with the camels uh, 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 bearing spicery and balm and mirth and, 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 and going to carry it down to Egypt. Verse 26, and Judah said unto his brother, what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him. So now you turn him into a slave. Somebody say, offense mutates. Into betrayal. That's what's happening. They couldn't stand him. Hated his guts. And I know what this is like. Because when I've been betrayed, I go back in my mind. Event after event. Word for word. I go back in my text. I go, man, you was at the house. And we went to dinner right here. You didn't say anything. Matter of fact, I paid for it. My God, I gave you a birthday gift. And you was, oh boy. And if you're not careful, it'll make you callous in ministry. It didn't make me callous, it made me smarter. You ain't giving up no details, you ain't getting none. <laughs> it was just that simple, buddy. Period. Period, Pastor? Period. With a T. So, so, so these guys are, are really ticked off at him. And it's look, we're, we're going to sell this guy uh, 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 to the Ishmaelites. And, and, and let not uh, our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our flesh, and his brethren were, 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 were content. Man, you okay with selling him off as a slave? Then we'll pass by Midianite's merchantmen, and, and, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and, and, and brought Joseph. So Jesus was betrayed for 30 by Judas. Joseph for 20. And they brought <coughs> Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he ran his clothes. He was ticked off. And returned unto his brethren and, and, and said, that child is not. And I wonder where he went. And they took Joseph's coat and, and, and killed a, a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood, and they sent the coat of many colors. They not, they not only hated Joseph, they was ticked off at their dad. To lie about your parents' child being killed, you hate him. You hate your dad. We want you to hurt. We want you to feel it. And so, so, so they took the coat of many colors. They brought him to their father and said, this, this we found. Look at all the lies and the conniving that, 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 that holds up abandonment, that holds up betrayal, that holds up offense. Uh, we found, and, and now whether it be the son's coat or not, uh, you know, but they knew they was lying. <laughs> and he knew it and said, the father knew it and said, it is my son's coat. And evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent, torn to pieces. And Jacob tore up his clothes, put sackcloth upon his loins, mourned for his son for many days, his favorite. And his sons, his own blood, is standing there watching him agonize. And they take a great joy in it. Why? Because when people are offended, they take a great joy in seeing you hurt. 
They are not going to talk about the good times you had. They are not going to talk about the many times you helped them. They are not going to talk about the many times you counseled them. They are not going to talk about when you was there for them. When they are hurt, their vernacular is all geared towards how bad you are. Betrayal is inherent in every relationship that we enter. And his son and all his sons and all his daughters rose up uh, to confront him, uh, but he refused to be com- to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, this, this father's messed up now. And said, I'll go into the grave of my son uh, of the morning. Uh, uh, thus his father wept for him, and the the night sold him into Egypt. Uh, uh, of course, Potiphar and also the Pharaoh's uh, 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 captain guard, captain of the guard. Let's go to uh, Genesis 39. So he's brought into the potter's house. Uh, the brothers have sold him into slavery. This, this, this family is a wreck. This blended family, is, it's, it's just falling all over the place. And it all started with brothers who were offended how their father loved their stepbrother. They were offended how their father adored their stepbrother. They were offended that their stepbrother told them, you're going to bow down. You're going to bow down. Stepbrother, half-brother, stepbrother, whatever. I grew up on step. Half, whatever, you know, whatever. Two ladies. Sperm went this way. <laughs> Boys come up over here. Boys come up over here. Uh, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard. Watch this now. An Egyptian bought him of the hands of watch this now, of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought them down to thither, and the Lord was with Joseph. Somebody said the Lord was with him. I don't care how abandoned you feel or how abandoned you felt, just know this, the Lord was with you. The Lord was with you. The Lord was with you. A lot of times we blame, you know, man, I just felt so alone. I just felt, and it's like, it's not, you didn't feel alone because God wasn't with you. You felt alone because you weren't acting like God was with you. You're going to see here later on, Joseph is steady ascending, steadily ascending. He's not wondering, God, where are you? (laughs) He is steady in the midst of betrayal, abandonment, and and, and, and offense. He, He is steady going up the ranks. Why? Because it's important when we ask the question, God, are you there? We got to tell ourselves, I am too. I receive your presence. I know my covenant with you. I know my covenant of protection with you. I know you didn't hang me out to dry. I know that for a fact that you will not leave me, nor will you forsake me. I know it too. Mm. Verse 2, and the Lord was with Joseph. Watch this. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of the master now, the Egyptian. And the master saw that the Lord was with him. Somebody said the Lord was with him. him. See, that's why when your haters are coming at you, the only reason you keep going back at them, you second guess what you're doing. But when you know what you're doing, you know what you say? Keep watching. Keep watching. Why? Because you're like a basketball. When he swims to the bottom of the pool and take it down there and let the basketball go, what does it do? That baby coming to the top. And you got to start telling yourself, I don't care what it looks like, What happened to me back here? What happened over here? This one left me. That one left me. They left me. Guess what? I'm still ascending to the top, not by myself, but I'm doing it because I know the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. And when you know the Lord is with you, it's just a little sting when people offend you, uh, betray you. But man, the Lord is with me. But when you don't think that the Lord is with you, you want to gather everybody else to fight your battle. No, you speak up. You keep going. You tell them to keep watching you. That little business ain't doing nothing. Well, keep watching. If you believe that. If you don't believe it, don't say it. Devil, come on. All right, now. Seven sons of Sceva. Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know. But, okay, you go to church once a month. You don't have a relationship with God. You don't, you don't spend time with him. Who, who are you talking to? The Bible says they took that man out into the street and took his clothes off of him and whipped his tail. Why? Because he was playing church. 
And when incidents and betrayal and offense comes into our life, you'll be surprised how quick it can melt down a person in the body of Christ. And they just, they, 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 they leave church, they give up, they quit. And it's like, what happened to you? Of people talking about them. They couldn't handle it. Okay. Oh, gosh. Verse 3, and the man saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord had made uh, uh, all that he did to prosper in, in his hand. So that dream that Joseph had came from the Lord. And Potiphar is noticing now, man, everything you touch goes well. Everything you touch goes well. It's one thing to know that you have a gift. It's another thing to know when people see it and they invest in it. That's a whole new, whole new animal right there. So, man, I did this, this guy right here, man, this lady, man, they can... Well, they know how to make money. So when they come, when 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 you say I need investors, guess what? People who invest have confidence. You know how to make money. That's why it's important to carry yourself with confidence. Never let them see you sweat. There's been times when I'm about to fall apart, but you ain't gonna see me sweat. You heard the testimony for 12 months. Doctor said, "I see a little one centimeter spot on your lung." For 12 months, I still came in, preached the word of God. Still encourage people. Never blame God, not once. Why? You're not going to see me sweat. And if you're going through a healing, never let, them, never let them see you sweat. You believe in God for something big? Never let them see you sweat. Hey, what did the test come back and say? Oh, well, it's not what I wanted to say. But guess what? Keep watching. God is with me. That's what you Don't let them see you sweat. <clears throat> Verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight, part of his sight, and served him. Look at Joseph's heart. It's still not bitter. <laughs> it's still not bitter. He could have said, you know what? I ain't nowhere in the world I'm going to set myself up to be betrayed again. He said, no. Stranger, Egypt, I'm serving. Why? It's in my heart to do. And he served him. And, 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 and watch him. And Potiphar made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into Joseph's hand. And it came to pass... The time that he had made him overseer in, the, in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for what? You've heard me say it before. When you come on the scene and shake somebody's hand, you know what you need to start saying? I'm glad you can meet me. Goodness have entered to your life. Goodness have come into your life. I am here to serve you. I want to see you do well. I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to pray for you daily. I'm glad you could meet me. I'm going to be an asset in your life. And when you take an interest in people, you leave a footprint in their life. <laughs> I got people in other countries. Once a month, without fail. Pastor, I just want you to know, I was in pathways. I got ready to do this. I got to, and without fail, every time that happens, I think about you. Think about you and Pastor Z and how you guys helped us. Without fail. What is that? We took an interest. We, we, we didn't want to be interesting. We were interested in their goodness. And that gentleman that was at my house says, you know what? I'm going to bless you with this and, 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 and. And you go ahead and use it, and I'll bless you with it. And every time I was using that machinery, it wasn't how blessed I was. <laughs> it was how blessed he was. Why? Because he had left a footprint in my heart with his goodness. And it's important we go through life doing that. When people touch things, turn a key to a car, house, credit pool, finances, this, that, look at that, I know for a fact me and my wife invested heavily into people's success today. And because people betrayed us, we didn't stop, just like Joseph. We got people right now working with, and guess what? We're taking an interest in them, and we're going to see them prosper. Why? Because the footprint is going to talk, and God is going to talk about the goodness of God that entered their life. Boy, that, that sounds kind of arrogant and prideful. Let me tell you something. If you don't take pride in being a good person entering into a relationship, you're there to take. I'm there to give. Oh, God. I don't have enough time. Oh. 
So for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all the land, verse 5, uh, all that he had, and in the house, verse 6, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew uh, 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 not all he had, save the bread which he did eat, and Joseph was a, somebody say it, he was a goodly person, and somebody say it, never let abandonment or betrayal remove your good heart. I'm never helping nobody again. I'm never going to give to this church. I'm never going to do this. It's like, oh, somebody's hurt you. They stifle your goodness. I want to be like Joseph. Take me to the bottom all you want to. I know it ain't me. God is with me. God favors me. The Lord favors me. I'm here to, be, I'm, I'm, I'm here to take interest in people's lives. And sometimes my wife says, you take too much. And they tell you, no, leave them alone. And they tell you, stop, leave them alone, Derek. And it's like, it's my hard wiring. I see stuff before they see it. Sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't, but I see it. When you're in a covenant relationship with people, you see stuff. Especially if you're a pastor, it's like, you see stuff for your kids. You see it. You're in a covenant relationship with those kids. You see it. Sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. Guess what? You still love them, though. <clears throat> He was a good person, well favored, and he was good looking, so here it comes. And it came to pass, after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Oh, Potiphar's busy building his business here, but he's not taking care of his business. I mean, you don't brought this young tenderoni around here. That's looking good, and he's dancing around in his little skirt and little sandals <laughs> with no shirt on. My God, and you're busy trying to build kingdoms. You ain't paying no attention to me. I don't care how spiritual you are. You better pay attention to your spouse. My wife would never, my husband would never. Okay. Okay. Samson was born a Nazarite. You know what that means? A vow at birth to serve God. But guess what? A lady took advantage of him. Took all his strength, learned all his secrets. Why? She listened to him. I don't care how much sex you have or your assets. If you don't have a history of listening to your spouse, at least 10 to 12 hours a week. Okay? Listening. Not talk. Because he found somebody to listen. That's why I lay my head in my wife's lap in a minute. And when your husband do that, all you have to do is be wordless and just rub that head. That's all you got to do. It's so powerful, you keep your social media right here in your phone. <laughs> just do them both at the same time. It's so powerful, you had a remote right here, just turn the TV. He don't even hear you. You're looking at HD TV. Boop. You just do it just. You ain't said nothing. You ain't said nothing. And I seen it melt men. And Asia's a professional. What's Asia? I don't know if she's here or not, but she's a professional at it. I see her grab Jeff's head with them shoulders. And he's talking, and like an electric shock goes through his body. He's like, oh, Jesus. And he's just, whew. She's rubbed her head. You got to listen. So his wife is like, wow, look at this. Laid eyes upon Joseph, and she said, hey, come lie with me. Joseph could have been like, got to body, that's it. I'm ready to inflict some pain on somebody now. But he was a man of high character, even in the midst of betrayal. And, and, and she, says, she, says, she says, come lie with me. But he refused. I always tell young men in a men's group or men in a men's group, listen, you can talk to your mouth catchers on fire, but here's the bottom line. You haven't passed the test until number 10 is coming at you with all she's got. Some you can pass the test real easy. You haven't passed the test. Until number 10 is coming at you with all that she has, and she's saying to this man right here, 
We don't have to do no DM sliding in, none of that. Lie with me. But he refused. Somebody said, man of high character. That's what we have in, in XL Church, men of high character. But you didn't pass the test until this, this kind of stuff right here happened. <clears throat> I'm having fun today. See, what, what, what it is, but, but we're in the word. But what, 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 see, 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 see when, when, when number four or five come at you, you know what you do? <laughs> see this? <laughs> Taken. You see this? But see, when number 10 come at you, well, yeah, yeah. So what, what school are you going to? Wow, okay, I went there too. Okay. All right, well, you know, I work out here every morning at 8 o'clock, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, you got your hands in your pocket now. But let me tell you something. This man who had been betrayed could have very well said, that's, that's it. I'm ready to inflict some hurt on somebody else now. But he didn't do it. <clears throat> he says, he refused and he said unto his masters, why? Behold, my master uh, 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 would, not, would, uh, would not what is with me in his house. He don't want this to happen. And he has continued all that he has to my, he's given all that he committed all that he has to my hands. Man, I'm in charge. He trusts me. There is none greater in his house than I. And what he's doing now, he's exalting her husband. Leave me alone, woman. And she didn't like that. And neither has he kept back anything from me but put thee, because you are his wife, how often, how, how then can I do this great wickedness? He could have said, I'm going to do this great wickedness because great wickedness was done to me. But he did not do it. And sin against God. Notice what he said at the end. To pass that kind of test, you can't just say, I'm not going to sin against my wife. I'm not going to sin against my husband. To pass that kind of test, he said, you know what? God is real in me. and There is no way I'm going to do this to my spouse. There's no way I'm going to do this to my friend. If you don't have that second part and God is not the final authority in you, guess what you're going to do? Slip and dip. And all the side chicks said, woo! And let me tell you something. Side chicks are the least favorite. You are not. You are not it. You are the least favorite. So don't run around gloating in that. You are the least. You start telling your girlfriend that. Start telling you, 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 you know, your homeboy that. Oh, she won't let you? Oh, man, you're, you're getting played, brother. Are you kidding me? Man, go out here and find you a real lady. If she's doing it with you, she's going to do it if y'all get together. What, what are you thinking about? This is crazy. Man, this lady gave you her heart? Why are you playing with her heart like that? Get out of that. What are you doing? Guess what? The guy or the girl who can't hear that, that second part, don't even phase him. They're not even considering God. All they're considering is, what can this do for me? And you can talk to your mouth, it's blue. If they don't have that second part in them, I'm here to tell you, they will keep going in that relationship. <sighs> Verse 10, and it came to pass, as she spake unto Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie with her. Boy, that's a test he passed. Or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time, that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within, and she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hands. There is no such thing as the devil was busy. Where are your clothes? Where are my clothes? Oh, my God, he's so busy. No. If she doesn't have your last name, buddy, and your husband, and she even touches you, you remove her hands with violence. Get away. But if you're bankrupt at home, you start second-guessing stuff. The Bible says he took off so fast, the robe stayed in her hands. <laughs> that brother was like, I don't want no 
part of this. And he fled and he got and, and, and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he has, he, he has brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came unto me to lie with me and cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that, I lifted up my voice and cried, and, and he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. Verse 16, and she laid up his garment by her until the big dog showed up. Betrayal number two. I stood on business with God. I came in his house and everything is going well. Everything in my hands touches prospering in his house. But guess what? This lady was coming after me. But when I resist her, guess what? Just like I said earlier, you flip the script to the public. Because I didn't buy into your fleshly moves. And you start laying the garment beside me. You don't tell the true story. You betray me again. This man had to feel so abandoned. But do you know what? The Lord was with him and he was with the Lord. Verse 19, when the pastors heard it, I mean, when, and it came to pass, when, the, when his master heard it, the words of his, when he heard the words of his wife, which spake unto him, saying, after this manner did thy servant uh, 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 to me, your servant did this to me, uh, his wrath was kindled. He was ticked off at Joseph. And Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, falsely accused. God, my gosh. Abandonment. Betrayal. All started with offense and a dream. Put him in the prison, uh, 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 and Joseph Master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. Guess what? But the Lord was what? <laughs> I don't care what the situation, circumstance presents to you. You have to know that the Lord is with you in every situation, every circumstance, and you got to practice this. Even when it's tough, when it's rough, the Lord is with me. Even when it's going good, the Lord is with me. Even when it's tough, it's rough, the Lord is with me. When it's going good, the Lord is with me. When they put you down, when they, when they lie on you, the Lord is with me. When they fire you, the Lord is with me. When the deal don't go through, the Lord is with me. Matter of fact, he didn't want me to have the deal. The Lord is with me. He leads me and guides me. I don't question him. He leads me and guides me because I am confident that he's with me. So in the yeses, he's with me. And in the noes, he's with me. In the bringing to me, he's with me. In the keeping away, he's with me. There's some things the Lord don't want you to have anything to do with that the world would latch on to. But you think that it's the devil. And a lot of times, it's God being with you, protecting you, your emotions, your health, your mind, your money. But, 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 but you get so selfish and you're ambitious, you don't realize, hey, God is with you in this note right here. And if you want to be like Balaam and just keep on going, it's going to take the donkey to turn around and talk to you. Why? Because the angel was right there waiting. Take another step. You got to take some signs as God is with me. Show me these things. It's not always the devil because the devil doesn't want you to see it. He wants you to keep going. And God says, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. The devil ain't going to show you this. This is not the devil. Look at this. And it's like you keep on going. Instead of saying, God is with me. I don't see the blessing. Oh, he kept me, he kept me from trouble. That's the blessing. We're so trained in church that when we name it and claim it, it's supposed to show up immediately. We're so trained in church that we don't have trials and tribulations. We're so trained in church that the only time God needs to speak is when something is coming towards me. But I don't need you to speak to keep it away from me. All right. It's tight, but it's right. So he got put in prison. The Lord was with him and gave him favor in the sight of the prison guard. So they put him in prison. He's abandoned in prison. He's betrayed. But everywhere Joseph went, the Lord was with him. See, some of you right now are second-guessing whether or not God is with you. And I'm here to tell you, he's with you. And you don't start believing it if you ain't saying it. 
You don't believe it if he's not, you're not reading about him. God favors you. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. But I tell you what, even building this church, God has shown me, look, my goodness and my favor is keeping things away from you. So I'm shutting it down. I'm going to frustrate it. That's my goodness to you, Derek. When I go, ah, I just feel like the Lord said. And the Lord's like, I know you feel like that. These three things right here should tell you. And I kept going, and guess what? I kept going, and guess what? Here's what I said. Here's what I said. Life happens. And I looked at the thing felt falling all over the place. Life happens. And the Holy Spirit say, no, you happen. This ain't got nothing to do with life. You wanted this. You did this. <laughs> you created this. Ain't no life happening. You, Derek, created this. Don't nobody want to say that in church. Well, you know, life is lifing. No, you are eyeing. <laughs> you are eyeing and creating this. And I'm here to tell you, I've done this with this church. And it's like, I want to turn to the devil. I want to turn to God. And it's like, life ain't lifing. You're eyeing. This is all you. Man, I, I am flat out of time. This is all you. Three minutes, two minutes, and 50 seconds. So, and verse 23, and the keeper of the prison, oh, verse 22, and the keeper of the prison committed to, to Joseph, uh, Joseph's hand all the prisoners <laughs> that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he, he was a doer of it. And, watch this now. And the keeper of the prison, verse 23, looked not at anything that was under his hand. Man, a lie. Just turned it over to him. Because what? The Lord was with him. Y'all want you to leave here today. I don't care what it looks like, who betrayed you, who offended you, who, 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 with any kind of abandonment. Man, I went through this in my last marriage. This happened in my marriage. This happened to me as a child. You need to walk out of today saying, you know, one thing I know about abandonment, where I was, where I am now, what I used to do compared to what I do now, where my money was to where my money is now, the Lord was with me. And he's always with me. He's always with me. He's always with me. Top, bottom, middle, side, he's always with me. He's always with me, amen? Let's stand to our feet. Glory to God.